Hi, and welcome to Anne's Family Recipe. Today I'm taking you behind the scenes of an event that I participated in last weekend, the Logan Family Farms Leap Year Dinners. Tom and Joanne Logan, the owners of Logan Family Farms, invited two groups of 25 people for leap year dinners at their beautiful farmhouse in Irwin, Pennsylvania. And they invited me to be one of the chefs for the evening. So I prepared their family recipe for corn casserole, which I'm going to share with you today because it is amazing. I also made my no-churn sweet corn ice cream and loaded smashed potatoes, which are recipes that I have videos for here on YouTube. So I'll link to those in my description box below. So when I arrived at the event both nights, the first thing I had to do was actually prep the food. So I was working in their beautiful farmhouse kitchen and I got started on the corn casserole. So that included onions and bell peppers that I sauteed in some butter. And once the veggies have started to soften, you add a little bit of flour to coat the vegetables. And this acts as our thickening agent for the sauce. So next you add in a little bit of milk and cook it until it really thickens up. Then to the vegetable mixture, you add in a can of creamed corn and fresh corn kernels. And of course I was featuring the Logan Family Farms fresh corn, which they had picked last summer just at the peak of freshness and then frozen immediately. So I had all of this beautiful fresh sweet corn at my fingertips tips to use in all my recipes. So I buttered my casserole dish and then poured the corn mixture inside and I topped this with white sandwich bread that was just cubed up and then tossed in a whole bunch of melted butter. And this makes for the most delicious toasty breadcrumb topping. So this casserole bakes at 350 degrees for about 45 minutes to an hour until it is bubbling the whole way through and it was so, so good. So the idea behind the dinner was that for each course, a different meat from Logan Family Farms was going to be featured. So they showcased their dry aged beef burgers, their Berkshire pork sausage, their sirloin beef hearts, which is not the actual heart, but it's just the name of the cut of beef. They were these delicious steaks. And then they also had a very tender Tex-Mex style brisket. And that's what my corn casserole was being paired with. And here you can see all of my smashed potatoes to go along with the steaks, which the guests got to grill themselves, which was such a neat touch. So once all our prep work was done, it was time to begin the event. And my husband, Sean, was filming the Saturday evening event and there was this really great group of people there that night from Fun Burger Tours in Washington, PA. So I'll link to them in the description box below. our beef for you know 21 to 28 days we dry age it and consequently that increases the flavor and also tenderizes it so as you taste the product and as through the evening here I think you'll agree and um, we do market here at the farm and we market at several the uh, farmers markets Hi, I'm Anne. Um, I have a YouTube channel called Anne's Family Recipe, and I'm a wife, I'm a stay-at-home mom, I have four kids, and I just make lots of family-friendly dishes out of my kitchen. But my husband, Sean, the Sean, um, who's filming, he films all my videos for me, and then I edit all of them, so I have two videos a week. And Sean was interested in trying dry-aged beef last year, and he went on Google and found Logan Family Farms. So that brought us here, and I made a video cooking one of their ribeye steaks, and it was the best thing I've ever eaten in my entire life. And I told Tom about it, and he's been, we've been working together. I have videos featuring his sausages, bacon, ham, their pot roast, their pork pot roast, which is incredible, and their sweet corn. I made a no-churn sweet corn ice cream for you today. Also a Logan Family Farms um, family recipe, their corn casserole, and then also a loaded smashed potato as a side dish. So I hope you enjoy. I started a small business because when people find out that you're a pastry chef, they start calling you for everything. So birthday cakes and cookies and everything like that. So it kind of turned into this big thing and I was like, maybe I should do this legitimately. So I did um, and I was the 
executive pastry chef at Rowing Rock Club. My last date was on Thursday. I was there for seven years, so I kind of decided to take the plunge because it was kind of hard to do both at the same time, so I kind of had to pick between. Um, but I've also been professionally trained. I went to Westmoreland County Community College and I completed a two-year apprenticeship at Nemico and Woodlands Resort and Spa. Um, I also teach there and I do like different things like that. I have four different beers to share with everybody. Uh, one of our beers is paired with each course. I have a New England IPA, a uh, Dunkel Bison, a uh, Irish Red, and a Stout. Um, so I'll be going over everybody's individual tables, uh, just a little bit about each beer and why it pairs with each meal. So after introductions, we got started preparing the first course, which was this incredibly delicious dry-aged beef burger with cheddar cheese on top, and then the toppings were so unique, you're not even gonna believe this. They spread peanut butter on the bun, they also had crushed peanut brittle, there was bacon, homemade pickled onions, and this citrus gastrique, which was this kind of really bright sauce that went on top of it. And then they just served it with lightly dressed greens with some fresh apple slices on top. It was so delicious. So the second course was Joanne Logan's recipe, which was tortellini with spinach, fennel, the Logan Family Farm's hot sausage, and this really creamy sauce topped with shaved Parmesan and fennel fronds. We now section out that heart and it, it looks uh, kind of like an eye of round or even filet. And then we cut it into the medallions and that's what we're having tonight. We sous vide it and I that we want the internal temperature that need to be. We have a little bit of truffle butter on it. Then we have our smashed potato, and you can dress it up for the party any way you want. So as I mentioned before, I paired my loaded smashed potatoes with their steaks, and they also had these cold blanched snap peas and asparagus that were dressed in a little bit of vinegar and salt and pepper. They were so yummy. And then I had all my toppings on the side for the loaded smashed potatoes. As I said, this is the brisket, and people are really scared of briskets, okay? And simply, I think, because of the size. We really enjoy brisket, and whenever I'm having a group of people, this is the kind of meat I usually go to. This is a nine pounder. When you bring out a brisket, people go, whoa. You know, but it has, there's flat cut briskets, and there's briskets that have the deckel on it. And the deckel is this, this uh, muscle of meat that sits on top of it, and usually carries the most fat. All right, this deckel piece. This is called a flat brisket. And we often will cut briskets in half or remove the deckle and then they usually use it in ground beef or whatever. But, um, or burnt ends. Or yes. burnt ends. Burnt ends are where the deckle comes from. I thought burnt ends was when the oven went crazy. <laughs> The fourth course was this incredibly tender Tex-Mex dry rubbed brisket served over top of the Logan Family Farms corn casserole. And after this course, it was time for me to do my first ever live food demonstration for my no churn sweet corn ice cream, which ended up being a huge hit. Okay, so this is a no churn sweet corn ice cream featuring the Logan Family Farm sweet corn. So this is from last summer, they picked it as like the peak of freshness and then they froze it right away. So that's what's being infused into my cream for the ice cream. So I wanted to show you real quick this kind of neat little trick. If you have an ear of corn that you're using for any recipe, really, it isn't essential, but if you have a bun pan, you can use a serrated knife and just cut the kernels off and they don't go flying everywhere. I tried this on a cutting board and most of my corn was just on my floor. So it's a nice little trick to use to kind of catch your corn. But for the ice cream, it's a no churn, so it's just heavy cream and they're fresh corn. And you simmer that for about 10 minutes so that flavor's infused into the cream. And then you're gonna um, strain it out, okay, and then chill it. And that becomes your like whipped cream for your ice cream. 
So I just kind of whipped up some cream here just to sort of show you. Um, but then you're going to mix the corn infused cream with some regular whipped cream, and then it's just sweet condensed milk and vanilla. And that's it. So once you mix it all together, you freeze it, and it makes this really light and fluffy ice cream texture. And it has this really nice kind of subtle sweet corn flavor. It's awesome. And you can use this method with any number of flavorings. I have a recipe on my channel for a pumpkin spice flavored. I also have a video for this flavor and I have the recipe printed out tonight too. If you like it, you're welcome to take it. It's just so nice because you don't need an ice cream maker. Um, and you don't even need, I mean, you can whisk with a whisk. You don't even need an electric hand mixer. So it really requires no special gear or anything, but it's very, very good. So and for a video it. demonstration, it's on your YouTube channel. Yes, it is, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna scoop it up for you. And if you have any questions, just ask. So Christina has put me in charge of the sliced raspberries to garnish her fantastic dessert. So here goes nothing. Don't mess it up. I know, I won't mess up. <laughs> And then lastly, after my ice cream, was Christina's dessert course, which was just so fabulous. She made a chocolate cake with a bourbon honey milk chocolate ganache and chocolate buttercream, a raspberry marmalade that you saw spread on the plate, and these little whipped cream canels, as she called them. It was so fabulous, the perfect ending to such a wonderful meal. Thank you so much for joining me today behind the scenes of the Logan Family Farms Leave Your Dinners. It was such an honor and a thrill to be working in the kitchen, you know, backstage of these events. I had such a blast. I learned so much and I hope to do something like this again in the future. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram at Ann's Family Recipe, and give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw here today. See you again soon.